G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews today. As promised, I'm talking about internal resistance in batteries and how you measure it. Because your charges will, some charges will measure it, but I've never found those figures to be particularly accurate, actually. They're kind of optimistic in many cases. So I figured let's do a scientific measurement. I'll show you what I'm doing, I'll show you the process, I'll show you the testing, that, well, the gear I'm using, and I'll show you how I calculate the internal resistance of at least one of these batteries. And I'm going to do the other batteries later on, no point in sort of boring you with all the stuff. I'm just going to do the Turnergy Graphene battery because that's what everyone wants to know about. Is it really as good as they say? So today we'll just be looking at the internal resistance. That's an important measure of the battery's performance because the lower the internal resistance, the more current it can deliver without dropping its voltage. And that's really, really important. So I'm going to use that as the benchmark. To, in this video, I'm going to establish the internal resistance of the graphene battery. And then later on, I'm going to look at the Turnergy Nanotech 45 to 90 C, the Turnergy Nanotech, what is it, 25 to 50 C or something, and the Gen's Ace Tattoo 1300, which is rated at 75 C, I think, on that pack. So, hmm, this could all be very interesting. So, yeah, stay tuned. Let's go over to the whiteboard now. I'll explain what I'm going to be doing. Right, so let's take a look at the test setup we're going to use to measure the internal resistance of these batteries. And what I've got on the board here is a circuit diagram. We've got Inside this blue box here, this is our battery under test. That'll be the uh, graphene batteries in this case, the battery under test. And it's drawn as a stack of cells. But I've also drawn this resistor in here. Now, there isn't actually a resistor, a physical resistor, as you'd expect, you know, the little wires with the color bands. There's none of those inside the battery. Uh, this is the, what you call the parasitic or the internal resistance of the battery. It's a fictitious resistor. It's just drawn to sim symbolize the fact that Everything inside the battery will resist the flow of electricity. The wires that connect to the plugs, the, the little straps that join the individual cells, they all contribute to the internal resistance of the battery, as do the cells themselves, because they're not superconductors. They have a resistance. And all of that combines to give us this here, which I will draw as, I'll call it I, or I'll call it, um, what will I call it? I, I, for internal no, IR for internal resistance. That was hard, wasn't it? God, where's my brain at today? Um, IR for the internal resistance. And it's a fictitious component. It doesn't exist if you pull these cells apart. You will not find that resistor because it's everywhere. Right, that's the internal resistance. That's the one we want to measure. How are we going to measure that resistance? Hmm, it's going to be tricky, but I'll show you how we do it. Okay, now we've got lead comes out through a switch through our load resistance because obviously to measure the internal resistance, we're going to have to start drawing some power out of our battery. You can't measure it if there's no current flowing, because if we look at our Ohm's law triangle, if we want to calculate this R, we've got to know a voltage and a current, as I showed you in my earlier video. So we've obviously, to do that, we've got to measure a current. Here's a current down here. This is our amp meter. It's going to measure the current flowing through our circuit when we close the switch. And here is a voltmeter. It's going to measure the voltage across the output of the battery. So if we can measure a voltage and we can measure a current, we can measure a resistance. But normally, normally we'd only be able to measure this resistance because this is the load. So we could say, as I did in the earlier video, if we know the current flowing through this resistor and we know the voltage across the resistor, we can determine how many ohms or fractions of an ohm that resistor is. But this time, we want to look inside the battery. What kind of magical mystery stuff will we do to achieve that? Well, it's actually quite simple because what we're going to do is we're going to take two measurements. One with the load, so we're going to measure the voltage across our battery, sorry, starting off, we'll measure the voltage across our battery before we put a load on it. So that means we're going to know the voltage of the battery. Then we're going to close the switch and current will flow. And then we're going to measure the voltage across the battery after we've closed the switch. And that means that the current we're measuring here will also be flowing through this little resistor, IR, the fictitious internal resistance. Now, because we have current flowing through there, um, if we can determine how much voltage is across there, we can measure its value. We can calculate its value using Ohm's law. Now, obviously, when, when we measure this voltage, it's just the voltage across the entire battery, so it's not going to be able to measure that resistance. But if we measure the, on the two occasions, once when there's no current flowing and once when there is current flowing, then we can measure that by looking at the difference in voltage. And I'll do the sums for you in a moment. But basically what we've got then is a voltmeter, which will look something like this. I've got a multimeter that I'll use to measure the voltage. I've got another multimeter I'll use to measure the current. There you go, so we'll know the current and the voltage. And for the load, um, obviously we're going to be drawing quite a few watts here, so I have decided to use a spotlight. See that? It's a spotlight. Bing, bing, bing. About 60 watts, 50 watts. So that will give us a reasonable amount of load to draw current out of our battery. We'll be able to measure how much power is going into this by measuring the voltage and the current as well. So there you go. My damn 
timer. My stopwatch I'm going to be using later is beeping at me. I think it's got an alarm on it. I don't know how to drive it, damn thing. So there we go, those are the basic components. And the switch, of course, is on the back of the spotlight. So there you go. Uh, let's go and measure some stuff and then calculate the internal resistance of this battery. Okay, I've got my meters set up here. The one on the left is measuring voltage, the one on the right is measuring current and amps. And I'm just going to show you a little something first because this is never as simple as you think it might be. I mentioned that we're going to measure the voltage without a load and then the voltage with a load. But look at the voltage we've got now, 15.08 volts. I'm going to turn on the load and you watch, it will drop down. That's what we expected, the internal resistance of the battery. A little bit of the voltage is lost across that. But I'm going to turn that off again now and look what happens. The voltage pops back up to 1502, 03, 04, 05. What's going on? Why is the voltage slowly going up after we've taken the load off? It's like, is the battery recharging itself? Well, no, it's not. It's a thing called ionic charge. And when you have a battery and you take the load off it, the voltage will start going up as ions start accumulating on the anode and the cathode. Or I don't know which side the ions on the on the anode. And um, positive, negative ions. Who knows? Anyway, so the voltage just goes back up a bit. That's called the floating voltage or the ionic charge. And we've got to take that into account when we do our measurement because otherwise our battery will look really bad because as soon as we add any kind of load, that voltage, that 15.7 or 15.0, sorry, 15.07 voltage will drop back down to a lower level because the amount of current it can deliver at that voltage is way, way low. So as soon as you put a load on it and take off that floating charge, it'll drop down to a far more stable figure. So we're going to have to put a small load on it just to take that floating voltage off or our measurements will be completely wrong. And here's the load I'm going to use. It's a light bulb, it's a 12 volt light bulb and I've got two filaments in there because it's an indicator and a brake light. I've wired them both in series so it's only going to draw a tiny little amount of current. And that current will not be registered by our amp meter because we're take, measuring that current before the amp meter is in the circuit. So. Um, Therefore, we'll still be able to do our measurements. I'm just going to put that in the circuit now. Let's have a look here. Right, so now, as you can see, our little light bulb is on. And that's just going to be drawing enough current to peel that ionic charge off. Now, I mentioned that time was a factor in this whole calculation because, obviously, it's now reading 14.94 volts. I'm going to turn the load on. We'll leave it on for, you know, a little while. You can see the voltage dropping. And it continues to drop, as I say, because the battery is discharging and the the more the battery is discharged, the lower the voltage will be. I'm going to turn it off again now, and you'll notice it doesn't go back up to the voltage that we started from, because we have discharged some of the battery. In fact, we're going to measure that now and see just how much discharge we get in 10 seconds, because we need to factor that into the whole equation. So I'll get my pen and a piece of paper so I can write some stuff down, and we'll do those measurements. So here we are at 14.91. I'm going to turn the load on, and we're going to... There we go. I'm going to... Time it for 20 seconds. That'll give us a pretty good indicator, so we'll know. And at the end of 20 seconds, I will turn off the load and see what the battery voltage comes back up to. We're up to 11 seconds. And we can extrapolate that. It's a pretty linear discharge. So here we go, 17, 18, 19, 20. There we go. Now we'll see what the voltage comes back up to, and that will tell us how much we've actually discharged the battery. And so we'll know, if we wait for 10 seconds to get a measurement, how much is actually due to the internal resistance. So we're now, let's say, 14.87. There we go. So now I can tell you that we have lost. That's 11 minus 7 is 4. Carry the 1. So we're losing about 0.04 volts every 20 seconds. So we should lose 0.02 to, an, to if we measure this over 8 seconds. So... Sorry, over 10 seconds. Let's do that. Let's measure it over 10 seconds. God, I'm getting so confused here. Let's do a real run, see what we get. So I will reset my stopwatch and make a note of the voltage, 18.7, and let's go. Here we go. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's our figure. 14.66 is what we had. 14.66. Minus, um, uh, we're going to add point two for the voltage drop. Excuse me while I do. The, excuse me while I crunch the numbers. Well, actually, we don't have to crunch the numbers. There we go. We've lost the point two volts. It was point fourteen point eight seven when we started. Now it's fourteen point eight five. So I was right in calculating we would suck point two, point zero two volts 
out of the battery. So let's see what that means in terms of our internal resistance. Because we saw the current figure there, let's do some Ohm's Law math. Right, here are some numbers we got from that little bench test. Now I'm going to run through them for you. When we started the test, the voltage across our LiPo, our graphene battery was 14.87 volts. That was the resting voltage with the ionic charge bled off. So it's a pretty solid voltage. Then we turned on the load here, the lamp, we turned that spotlight on and it drew about on average 4.36 amps. And we ran it for 10 seconds. At the end of 10 seconds, we had an end voltage of 14.66 volts. That was the voltage we were reading across the battery after 10 seconds with that load on. Now, remember we determined that the load itself is going to bring the battery voltage down by 0.04 volts every 20 seconds or 0.02 volts every 10 seconds. So we must remember that because if we subtract the end voltage from the start voltage, we see the total drop during the 10 seconds was 0.21 volts. But remember, we must subtract that 0.02 volts. That was just the normal discharge. That's not part of the internal resistance. That's just the normal voltage drop as the battery goes flatter. So subtract that and we get 0.19 volts is the total voltage drop when we apply the load. That takes into account the fact the battery is going down. So we, when we put the load on, this internal resistance here drops 0.19 volts. Ah, so now we've got one of the keys to working out what the value of this internal resistor is. And what we must do then, of course, is um, calculate using this formula and this current to get that resistance. Now, if I can find my pen, here it is. I shall try and, oh, can we see up in the corner there? Yes, we can, I'll do it up here. So we know what V is. V is 0.19 volts, we've calculated that. These are the components of, can we see that in the thing? I don't think we can. I better Better do it again. I'll just move that down a bit so you can see. It's not going to plan. 0.19 volts. Hopefully you can see that. Yes, I can see it on the camera. So that's our voltage. And we must divide that by the current. The current was 4.36 amps. 4.36 amps on average. And that enables us to calculate, and I've just I'll do it again on my calculator because my brain is nowhere near that good. We've got 0.19 volts divided by 4. 0.36 that gives us 43.5 milliohms so that equals put the equals over here 43.5 milliohms that's 43.5 thousandths of an ohm now that's the total battery internal resistance that's the value of this here but of course if you want to know how much per cell you divide that by four so that's around about nearly 11 milliohms per cell and that seems pretty high compared to what the charge told us. And, but that's what we've measured. Now, you notice I didn't measure it with a fully charged battery. Why didn't I do that? Well, because uh, generally speaking, I'm going to measure them all. I'm going to do other batteries. I'm going to measure them all at the same, pretty much the storage charge of the battery. Because that's, most batteries will hold up pretty well when they're fully charged. But as they start to tail off a bit, that's when they really start to get soft. So I'm going to measure them all at the same voltage, which would be around about that um, 15 volts or 14.8 volts. And that on the graphene batteries gives us an internal resistance of 43.5 milliohms, which actually is quite respectable, quite respectable, because it's a real genuine measurement, not just something the charger cocked up, co uh, concocted. Because the other thing to remember too is, of course, internal resistance actually varies a bit depending on the current you're drawing. If you measure it at a very low current, you get a different number to when you measure it at a very high current. I've only measured it at a fairly modest current, not even 4C, but that's an easy current to work with. You know, I chose that because my spotlight draws that much current, and so that's fine. So at those figures, we're getting that number there. I'm going to test in a couple of upcoming videos the Gen Zace Tattoo and also this, the ordinary Nanotech batteries. We're going to run the same tests, see what numbers we get for those. But this is our baseline for the graphene batteries. As I say, it is respectable. It's an honest 43 milliohms for the entire battery. And we could do some more number crunching on that if we assume that that was a... Uh, well, let's do some more number crunching. Let's assume that is a genuine honest figure. And I'm going to take some of this off because I've got some room. And about time I clean my whiteboard properly again, it's getting a bit blotty. Let's assume we were going to draw, say in the average mini quad, what are you going to draw? Mm, about 40 amps. You know, you can draw more on burst, but we might draw 40 amps. We can use that Ohm's law again. We know the resistance, the internal resistance of our battery, and which is R, and we know the current we want to draw, so we can work out how many volts are going to, or how much voltage drop we'll get out of our battery. Let's do that simple sum now. So we're going to do 40 amps times the resistance, which is 0.0435 that will tell us how much voltage will drop 
at 40 amps. I'm going to get my calculator again because I'm so useless at this. So that's 40 times 0 0.043. You probably, worked it, probably already worked this out in your heads at home. 1.74 volts would be the drop. 1.74 volts. So in, a, in theory, and we might test this later, if we whacked a uh, 40 amp load on our graphene four cell battery, the voltage would drop by 1.7 volts. So if we started with say, let's say we started to make it nice and easy, if we started with um, 15 volts, we'd subtract 1.7 volts and we'd get 13.3 volts when we punched the throttle and drew 40 amps. And that's probably not too far off the facts, actually. If you've got a battery that's discharged about 15 volts and you hammer the throttle on a mini quad, it's going to drop down pretty low. And then get the low voltage warnings if you've got telemetry. So again, we'll test these out later. But my next videos, or the ones I'm not, maybe I won't post next, but the next tests I'm going to do will be the Gen's Ace, the Tatu 75C, I think they're rated at the ones I've got here, and the normal Turnigy Nanotech. I've got some 25C and I've got some of the, what is it, 35 to, or 45 to 90C. I'll test them both. And in an upcoming video, we'll compare and see whether they are better or worse. Now, these graphene batteries, a lot more testing to do, a lot more testing to do. What I've got to do, of course, is they, the biggest feature of these graphene batteries, as far as I can see, is not this number here. I mean, I don't really care as long as it holds up all right under, under flying because I'm not one of those people that flies at full throttle all the time. In fact, none of the fast flyers do. You listen to them or you watch the videos, they're only using full throttle in bursts. So, you know, this internal resistance figure, it's nice to have, but it's not critical by the look of it. What is really important to me is how long do these damn things last? I mean, you can buy a normal nanotech battery, and I get probably somewhere between 100 and 150 cycles before they start getting just a little bit soft, and you can feel them, and they lose in capacity. And that's not too bad, because you look at the price, it's a few cents per flight. But they're claiming 600 plus cycles for these graphene batteries and still having 80% of the capacity. If that's the case, then while they are such better value than the other batteries, because although they cost more, you, the cost per flight is way, way lower. So unless you're actually breaking batteries, which sometimes you do, um, the graphene batteries, if they live up to the claim, they're going to be a really extraordinary value in terms of the total cost of ownership. That is the number of cents per flight that it costs you to fly your models. So there's no way I can do 600 charge and discharge cycles in the lab here in a reasonable period of time, because that's just silly. Even at 15C charge and at you know, 30C discharge, it's going to take a long time. So I'm out there, I've got one pack that I'm hammering, just hammering, hammering, and I'm going to see, I've kept me a track of how many times I've used it. And when I get to maybe a couple of hundred charges, which will be probably, you know, maybe a month or two, I'm then going to measure the capacity and compare it to the figures I got when I started. And we'll see if this figure here has changed, because that's going to be the crucial number. So there you go, that's the, how to measure internal resistance of a battery. Um, how to measure the hidden resistor that's stuck inside there even because you don't want to rip the battery apart and stick your probes into the battery you just get smoke coming out you've got to use your head you've got to use your brain you've got to use ohm's law and some measurements and calculations that's how you do it that's what we did that's how we got this number okay so there you have it there's the test those are the results for the graphene battery now i couldn't wait honestly I've, i'm going to do a proper full test but i couldn't wait so i did actually test the um the what is it the nanotech the normal nanotech 45 to 90 c and i found that it has an internal resistance of 56 milliohms so it is quite a bit higher than the graphene batteries which means that the graphenes are really going to outperform the nanotech batteries in high current uh, applications but i haven't done the gens ace yet i will be doing that and i'll do the 25 c battery as well and that should have an even higher figure so stay tuned there's more on this coming up and if you got any questions you got any comments then please put them below the video on the page that YouTube provides, and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers. I appreciate it all. Stay tuned. More videos coming up real soon.